I've made an introduction of Dr. Francis Cress Welsing in a past video on this channel. However, just to be brief, she was a psychiatrist and also wrote the ISIS paper on the Cress theory of color confrontation back in the 60s, a theoretical explanation of why whites behave as they do. These papers, to the best of my knowledge, have never been disputed to this day. You see, back in the 80s, American TVs were known to air program, among which were debates that discuss critical topics that in today's standards will be deemed too controversial and sensitive to viewers. One of the well-known talk shows of the time that hosted this kind of debates was The Donahue Show, hosted by Phil Donahue himself. In this clip, the year is 1988. The renowned psychiatrist has been invited to the show and appears before Phil Donahue to discuss white people's greatest fear and why the white race was likely to disappear if it was left unchecked. All over the place. You're a psychiatrist and you're author of a theory. Here's what she's saying. First of all, white people are dying out. The conversation begins almost immediately in a weirdly short introduction of Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, a point on minority traits and a joke to calm the predominantly white audience. Into the next century, everybody on earth may be of color. And we're scared about it. Already we're a minority. Did you know that? I'll guess 25% of us are white, maybe less than that. And that's the reason we're racist. We're not only afraid of dying out, but we're also jealous because we have no color. <laughs> You're laughing. How come we spend so much time in the sun trying to get brown? Sensing the seriousness of the discussion, Phil Donahue then puts an effort to try and cover the joke he made for that time in the American history, as the conversation was about to take a whole different direction. And if you, we don't, if, how do you explain? Do you believe we're racist? No. No, we're not racist. No. Yes, we are racist. No. What is this, an accident that all the, the cities are becoming blacker and blacker while the uh, outer reaches of major metropolitan whiter and whiter, that's an accident? Fuck. When you get on an elevator and you're the only white person on the elevator, how do you feel? <laughs> What'd she say? What'd she say? Frightened, she said? Oh, she's scared of elevators. Okay, here we go. Francis Cress Welsing, MD. You are a Washington, D.C.-based psychiatrist and you're author of the Cress your middle name, we should say, theory of color confrontation and racism. You call racism white supremacy. Uh, to be sure, a provocative and controversial theory on skin color and oppression. Well, I'm ready. So is this mostly but not exclusively white audience. Let them have it, doctor. What's, how, boy, oh boy, you, do you need an escort to get out of your speeches? No, now, let me just give you a little background. This paper was written approximately in 1969 and presented in 1970. It was written for a group of black psychiatrists who were looking at racism. Yeah. It was also written because as a psychiatrist and working in a hospital trying to treat black people and white people, but recognizing that the majority of the problems that black patients had in a psychiatric hospital, when you took a history, you would run smack into racism. Okay. So I knew I had to understand racism to help solve the mental health problems of black people. Okay. So out of my brain computer, putting in the question, why? Why do we see this behavior? Why have we seen it for hundreds of years? So I thought about these two things, basically two facts, that even though the white population says that people of color are minorities, minorities, that it is the white population that is the, the minority, majority. the minority on the planet. That's the reality you're saying. That's the reality. Yeah. That in spite of the fact that black people, non-white people have heard over and over again, you're genetically inferior because you are non-white. That in reality, white skin is a genetic recessive status, not as said by Francis Welsing. What is you it? See, what is meaning it? that... If Meaning that if you and I were to have a baby, the baby would have color, and you make the contribution, and I don't. That the that white so plus what? colored. Well, wait a minute. It's not Francis Welsing that is concerned about the disappearance of white. Ben Wattenberg just wrote a book, The Birth Dirt. 
There have been multiple articles in the newspaper talking about the decline of Western populations. Yeah, here's, so, the, uh, here's the Washington Post, just to name one. We are a depopulation uh, bomb, the withering of the Western world. Here, incidentally, uh, this, was, uh, this was the percentage of the West population in 1900, the turn of this century, uh, about 30%. Uh, this is where we'll be less than 10% in, in uh, the year 2075. Here's where we are about today, 15. So we're not having babies. So whites are not having babies, and there is the concern about white genetic annihilation. In other words, I look at, this is Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday holiday, and people will say, well, here's a man who talked about love. Yeah. Why was he killed? And I say that the deeper logic is, what if all black and white people and non-white people and white people love? What would happen to white people? White would disappear. You see, just mix all of the people on the planet if, up together. In other together. words, if race didn't matter, or if color didn't matter, it follows with the jet plane. No, I'm not saying if it didn't matter. I'm saying that, indeed, if there was a mingling of all of the people, because That's what I'm the saying. ability... Okay, fine. Absence of prejudice. The ability, no, I'm, wait, don't confuse what I'm saying. At this point, Dr. Francis Cress has done put nearly all information that needed to be said. Phil Donahue has interrupted her point so many times it has become obvious, and so by using science to explain white greatest fear, she makes sure that her points don't get confused. I'm saying that if we mixed all of the people presently on the planet, stirred them up, that the white freckled that face the people white would be gone. Genetic recessive status would disappear. And that if you if I did a survey and everybody didn't have to, you know, face anybody, if I said how many people, how many people who are white want their children to be white, want their grandchildren to be white, want their great grandchildren to be white, want their great great grandchildren to be white. And I've gone all over the country in England and asked this question. Yeah. Everybody wants the children and the generations to remain white. Yeah. If you do, then you have to do something to make sure that that happens. And, and I say that what the thing is that is done and particularly in relationship to black non-whites, because we have the greatest genetic potential to cause white genetic annihilation. Because you're the blackest. Because we, right. The most colored. Right. We have this ability to produce melanin pigment. We have more of it than anybody else. And so the most pressure is on black people. As a matter of fact, the black people learn, all non-white people over the world learn. If you're black, stay back. If you're yellow, you're brown, stick around. If you're yellow, mellow, white, right. I can go to England and the people can just say the same thing. Doesn't matter whether, if you go to the Philippines, because there has been a confrontation of brown with white. Everybody knows the more pigment you have, the more pressure that is on you. Yeah. But they didn't understand why. I said yeah. the why is for the purpose of white right. genetic survival. All right. At this point, you've already noticed a pattern on Donahue's interruption. However, Dr. Frances Cress Welsing has completely stirred the audience using her prediction from the 70s and given real life examples to show how big the pigmentation war is. And you're saying that blacks have no similar hidden subconscious anxiety Not about, about their blackness being undermined by the president presence no, of white we don't have we don't have you that don't. fear and i think that this is something that is not understood see. you see in other words if i if i don't worry about as a matter of fact under white supremacy the non-white people try to get lighter you see because the less pigment by you have the, the less the... threat you are to right. white and so the greater opportunity that you have yeah the mass inability of whites to live and attend school in the presence of non-whites, manifested by the patterns of black and white housing and education throughout this country, and indeed throughout the world, is seen, according to your thesis, in terms of the color confrontation thesis, as the apparent total psychological discomfort experienced by whites in situations in which they must daily face their color inadequacy when they confront their neighbors of color. You go See, on I predict it. Look, I wrote that in 1970. I said you cannot have integrated housing. You cannot have integrated schools. You still believe that? I, well, I mean, the evidence. I always look at the evidence. If Mr. Black and Mr. White live next door to each other, they have the same job, the same income, the same car, the same furniture. Yeah. They both walk out of the house in the morning. Good morning, Mr. Black. Good morning, Mr. White. Yeah. 
But Mr. White is still looking, but you've got something that I don't have. You're saying he's saying that he's subconsciously. Saying, right. Now, wait a minute. Oh. All right, well, give me a chance in just a moment. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Let's look at this. They're nice people. You're really going to like people. them, I Wonderful. promise you. You know. Let's Once in a this. while, you know, a couple of them stop before they come up here and you got to keep them in. Let's look at this. You, you know, know, go ahead, look at it. Very fortunately. Now, let me just understand this. See, well, the reason they're groaning is, you know, that's an awful bad rap to take. Let's, let me just arrogantly try and reword what I think you're saying. Now, don't get crazy. Let me say. Please. I'm Mr. White is looking at Mr. Black, and he's not consciously saying, don't you not dare. Not consciously. So it is oh, under here. Not consciously. I, I mean, I could, we could go on for three hours. Not no, consciously. All right. All right. Okay. I am saying that this behavior is at the subconscious level, and there's a lot of evidence. Yeah. For yeah. example, just on Saturday, the New York Times had an article talking about the percentage of people who want a tan. 66%. I have the article if anybody wants to look at it later. 66% of white adults think they look better with a tan. 70% of uh, white adolescents think they look better with a tan. What do white people, ooh, I look so pale. <laughs> now, yeah. this is not something that Frances Welsing is putting on people. White females even say their ideal mate is who? Tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> <laughs> now, Phil, I mean... Wait a minute, okay. just a minute. Donna Hugh interrupts her again with a joke. That whites do indeed desire to have colored skin can be seen by anyone at the very first signs of spring or summer. When they begin to strip off their clothes as many pieces as the law will allow, often permitting their skins to be burned severely in an attempt to add some color to their white, pale, colorless bodies, rendering themselves vulnerable to the dreaded skin cancer in the process. Most cosmetics also are seen as an attempt to add color to their skin. Such coloring makeup is even now being provided for the white, male well guess who has you know what on at this moment <laughs> and if you don't mind my saying so i do i put it on myself i don't go to makeup i have i have a shine on my nose i've got to take but i feel better for a little color <laughs> and i've got the whitest skin in the whole neighborhood i'm telling you no kidding but dr francis doesn't have it I'm not bragging, I'm saying see, I'm as a not, matter of see, fact. See, I'm not, this is not, my discussion is not about making fun of white people. My discussion is trying to explain behavior. I, see, I, people I, come I, to psychiatry. I value say, your effort why here. Do, why am I doing this? For example, I, uh, when I was a very small child, I wanted to understand why black men were lynched. I asked my grandmother and parents, why would this be done? And my grandmother gave a statement. She said something like, well, some people just want to act ugly. But that wasn't sufficient, you know, well, as a psychiatrist. May I interrupt for just a moment? Here's the read on that, and I know you want to add to this or make it just a little more complicated. Uh, the black male was lynched and often castrated because of the white male fear of the black male's... The myth is the black male's uh, extraordinary sexual capacity. So he was lynched by frightened white males who feared that if he ever got any, anywhere near the white women that somehow the white male would be a se now well, you want to add minute, to now, his sexual capacity what are we talking about i say that the fear is that the black male can cause white genetic annihilation and this is why the attack on the genitals there's no history in the world of any non-white men attacking white men's genitals but why do white men feel the need to zero in on the black man's genitals and cut them off. Yeah. You see, and a lot of, uh, a lot of this is, is played out in symbolic behavior yeah. in this culture. For example, the culture says, keep your eye on the ball. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Look at, look at something that, look at... I get there to just one second. See, look at something that people do not look at. Look at the game of billards. See, the psychiatrist knows that Beep. through games we play out subconscious, subconscious activity. Yes. yes, they do. Okay, know. now look at this game. Here's a game with colored balls. 
Yes. All over the table. And guess who gets to shoot the ball? The white ball knocks all the colored balls under the table. And, and often and saves the black And then the black the ball, ball right. <laughs> Till last. Till last. Because there's a specialness about the black. Yeah. Let me, uh, Dr. Welsey, let me... Now, you don't, you're not surprised at the response of this audience. Just a couple of things here for the sake of our conversation. First of all, um, we welcome your contribution. That is, for what it's worth, I certainly do. Which does not mean, therefore, that I or this audience necessarily agree with everything you say. But let me tell you what I think is important. I don't think we've asked enough questions about this thing called racism, which has, in my opinion, the capacity to bring us down as a nation, if not, certainly not only here, but in many parts of, of the world. It is in the American bloodstream stream and it's especially manifest here um so good for you trying to figure this out because it's it's my no kidding it's my opinion not enough smart people are really speaking to the we run away from this another point you make you think this the token black is an effort to assuage this hidden feeling that we have is that uh, how do you explain well, the token black i mean you might say that was under pressure do you see that you have to, the civil rights movement, you have to include some non-white people. But every effort is made to Not make move it. around that. Mm -hmm. And I understand, I mean, it's tragic. Mm -hmm. And it's injustice. Yeah. And I'm not just saying here. I'm saying all over right. this planet, whether we're talking about South Africa. And see, one important example that people do a lot of surface talking about yeah. is the Holocaust. See how quiet it is. Well, the what's Holocaust the in Germany was because what? Because the Semites of the Jewish religion were said by the Europeans to be non-white people. The Holocaust didn't just occur. So you think that there's Wait a minute, do you see what I'm saying? If we, have, if we have denial going on about this, all you have to do is look at what the Nazis are saying today. You, and you, what the Klan is saying today. So you're saying anti-Semitism has I'm, the same root? If you read Hitler, if you read all the documents, Anti-Semitism has pigmentation do, as it's had under Had to the, do with the Semites. Look at a part of the world that the Semites come out of. I say that the word Semite comes from the Latin prefix semi, meaning half. Mm. It's a word like mulatto. It means a combination of black African women, Greek and Roman soldiers, and you had that mixture. 2,000 years of continuing mixture in Europe yeah. made a lighter okay. group of people okay. Can I just, that were still considered now to let be non-white. When you use lighter and uh, you, you say uh, recessive, uh, and you use the word recessive gene, I think I know what that means. This uh, is not my language. This is the language of formal genetics. Uh, that's true. Uh, but you equate recessive with uh, inferior. Now, just um, hang on one second. I don't claim to be the first one to bring this to your attention, but aren't you dangerously close to Joseph Mendel with all this stuff? No, no, no. no How no. about Shockley? No, no, no. no. Wait a minute. No. no. What I am trying to do is explain some very, very important behavior on the planet that other people have shied away from dealing with. Yeah. Do you see? And to say that because you talk about it, it's just like if somebody, discussed, you know, studied tuberculosis and say, well, are you against the tuberculosis organism? No, you're trying to understand Well, it. but you do bring judgments. I mean, so when you say, when you equate recessive with inferior, that's not no, science. Say, that's judgment. No, no, no. I'm not, that's not what I say. I say that the people who are feeling with the, abs feeling an absence of color, that they look at themselves in that way. And they have a response to therefore say, if I can get in charge of all these non-white people, then I am going to be superior. So nobody is uncomfortable in the white collective with all the white superiority that goes on every day. Look at television. White, right. white, 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 Let white, me... white, 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 white. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> all right, I got it. Hold on a minute. Look at... All right, hang on oh, just one second. Oh, my goodness. Hold one second. Uh, there are a couple of things which you, uh, listen, um, there are people out there who say, look at all the progress they're ma we're making. I'm look not, at the I'm, League report. I am not one of those people. Fine. Nevertheless, nevertheless, there are, there are examples of, of, uh, integrated communities. Truly are. But see, the, an the, uh, the answer is not a question of are there a few black people living where white people live. The issue is, is that if we are going to have peace on the planet, there has to be justice. 
and white supremacy, where you have the tiniest number of people on the planet holding down the vast majority of people on the planet, happens to be the highest form of injustice. Yeah. And so if we are going to have peace, see, I'm not talking about destroy white people. I'm saying, but we do have to eliminate white supremacy. And I say in the back of that paper, the challenge to white behavioral scientists, help people who classify themselves as white become comfortable with their color and comfortable with their minority status so that they are not feeling negative and then mistreating all of the people that they say are what non-white right.